Hello everyone, good afternoon. This is Professor Henderson and today we will be discussing the chapter on caring for a surgical patient, chapter 50 in your Potter and Perry textbook. As always, we start out the lesson plan in looking at the student learning objective. And here are the student learning objectives. Explain the concept of perioperative nursing care. Discuss common surgical risk factors related to nursing implications. Discuss perioperative assessment data to obtain for a surgical patient. Prepare a patient physically and psychologically for surgery. Discuss benefits of preoperative warming. Discuss the role of a registered nurse in the operating room. I have a little case study here, and as we know, case study, um, there's a lot of research now on case study, and case study is used in education in order to um, enhance learning. So um, I am going to read this little case study here, and you will see how many um, important facts that we may be able to map out of this case study. So, Mr. Karloff is a 53-year-old man who has been experiencing abdominal pain for two months. Following a series of diagnostic tests, he is now scheduled for elective laparoscopic gallbladder removal surgery. He is a widow and has two adult daughters. Mr. Karloff is from Russia but speaks English relatively well. He still speaks Russian when family is present. So critical points relating to this case study. So prior to someone going into surgery, what are some labs do you as a nurse may anticipate that the doctor may order for this patient? So some of the labs that may order might be a complete blood count, the CBC, where the doctor wants to see the patient's RBC, WBC, hemoglobin, hematocrit level. How about the basic metabolic panel, blood chemistry, to see their sodium, their potassium, and their electrolytes? Also, he may order um, cross-matching blood cross-matching because in case the patient needs a blood transfusion they might they might um they'll have that information prior ahead um with blood cross-matching how about a BUN and creatinine to see they might use certain dye in surgery and they want to see the ability of the um kidney to clear that dye so to prevent nephrotoxicity to the kidney how about coagulation studies, the ability of the blood to clot? They may order a um, PTT, partial thromboplastin time, and a PT. Also, also they may order a blood glucose level to see the baseline um, blood glucose of the patient. Also, diagnostic tests that you may anticipate that the doctor may order. Um, especially if the patient have underlying cardiac issues. Um, they may order an EKG to see their baseline um, cardiac rhythms. What are some post-operative complications that um, you can anticipate that may occur? So we know that there's so many complications that can occur after surgery. So DVT is one, deep vein thrombosis um, due to lack of immobility. They might have a, they might develop a clot electrolyte imbalance, nausea, vomiting, dehydration. These are some common um, post-op complications that can occur. As we know, there are different classifications of surgery. We know there are major surgery, there are minor surgery, there's emergency surgery, there's elective surgery, there's urgency surgery. So what do you think a major surgery is? A major surgery is an extensive surgery that alters the person's body image. So an example, some examples of a major surgery are like coronary artery bypass, 
that is a major surgery. How about colon resection or removal of a larynx? Those are major types of surgery. So minor surgery involves minimal alteration in the body parts or body image. So an example of a minor surgery might be um, a tooth extraction or a cataract extraction or maybe plastic surgery of the face might be a minor surgery. Urgency surgery is done to um, prevent any type of complications. For example, a patient might be needed an urgency surgery to prevent complications. Removal of a cancerous tumor or lesion is might be an urgency surgery. Removal of a um of of stones or gallbladder might be an urgency surgery. Emergency surgery is done and must be done if um, it threatens the person's life, like um patient appendix is getting ready to rupture. The doctor might go into emergency surgery to prevent it from rupturing. So those are different types of classification of surgery. So we know with um, with any type of surgery, we know that um, there, there's surgical risk factors and there's several risk factors that are listed here. So uh, we know smoking. When someone is, uh, has a history of smoking, they pose as a surgical risk because as we know, Smoking increased the risk for perioperative complications such as poor wound healing, also pneumonia, also atelectasis, secondary to difficulty in clearing the airway mucus. How about age? We know the very young at, is at also increased risk as a surgical risk factor due to immature um, thermal regulation. Also, the very old is also at risk for, um, for surgery due to maybe um, hypothermia related to uh, malignant hypothermia. Nutrition, as you know, after surgery, your need for nutrition increases and post-surgery should have at least 1,500 kilocalories per day. Obesity also poses a risk for surgery because it increases the risk for a patient having atelectasis, also um, risk for coronary artery disease, hypertension, heart failure, all of those are risks related to obesity. How about um, obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, that also poses a risk partial or complete obstruction of the upper airway, periods of apnea where a person stops stop breathing. That's also uh, poses a risk. Immunosuppressant patient also at risk. Um, immunosuppressant patients such as patients with advanced um, AIDS or cancer or organ transplant. Fluid and electrolyte imbalance due to um, due to breakdown of neg negative nitrogen balance. So depletion of um, potassium increases a patient risk for um, dysrhythmias. Um, venous thrombolism, DV DVT, clot formation in the deep vein. Post-surgery, if patient had a total knee replacement or hip replacement, as we know, um, center of Medicare, CMS, no longer pay or reimburse hospitals for patients um, acquiring DVT um, post-surgery. Post so ways to prevent DVT is early emulation and using compression stockings. So we know when a patient is um, going for surgery, uh, we know um, communication is critical. It's called handoff communication. So handoff communication is between the caregiver is needed to ensure continuation of care. 
thus reducing the risk for errors. And it's critical that the nurse communicate the information clearly. How about um, glycemic control and infection prevention? Poor glucose control increases risk for wound infection and, and it's related to high mortality rate. So hyperglycemia during and post increase the risk for infection. So it's important to monitor the patient blood glucose level. How about pressure ulcer prevention? Positioning the patient or using um, pressure relieving uh, services is also critical in order to maintain uh, skin integrity. As we know that um, patient condition is always changing during assessment, consider all of the elements that build towards making appropriate nursing diagnosis. Integrate knowledge regarding the patient's um, specific clinical situation along with previous experiences in caring for surgical patients. Use professional perioperative standards. Um, so use a patient center approach using clinical judgment and reasoning in order to enhance patient care and patient safety. Um, through the patient eyes, determine patient's expectations of surgery and the road to recovery. Does the patient able to um, describe the surgery that they're scheduled for? Does the patient understand about the pain relieving after surgery? Do the patient um, nursing history, do the patient have an advance? Ask the patient if they have an um, advanced directive in place, a DNR or a healthcare proxy, and ensure that a copy of the signed healthcare proxy is placed in the patient's record. Medical history screen for condition that increase surgical risk, such as um, patients with um, CHF has an increased risk for cardiac compromise post-surgery. So they may need an IV, but they might need an IV at a slower rate in order to prevent um, fluid overload. Check for complications in prior surgeries, such as um, Patient never had surgery before. Review their charts if they had complication related to anaphylactic shock, malignant hypothermia, nausea, vomiting. Report these findings to the anesthesiologist and the surgeon. So we know that um, we also screen patients for allergies also. Um, as a risk factor, screen patient, um, is patient alert, have allergy to latex or any topical agent, review patient medical record, increase risk for complications, um, also um, patient medications, screen patient if they have um, what type of medications they're on, certain medications such as ANSAID, Aspirin, herbal, or over-the-counter medications may also increase patients' risk for bleeding. So oftentimes in the clinical settings, the doctor may um, hold these medications 48 hours prior to um, scheduling of um, surgery. As we spoke already about the um, the medications and topical agencies, allergies to um, latex and certain type of medications. Um, here's a case study again. You can have time. You can review that. Um, also, we know we have to support. We have to um, gather information about the patient. How do they feel? about the um, surgery that they're going to having. having. What impact would the surgery have on their um, body image? If they're scheduled for an amputation, that might significantly alter their body image and the way they perceive themselves. 
so um, their perception will directly influence how they will cope with their surgical procedure. Their coping